voice is too much low. I can't hear. Okay. Is the voice clear now? Abdul Rauf, can you please tell me? Can you hear me now? Is the voice clear? Acha. Acha. So, uh, okay. So, we were talking about the toxication with this Dallas Bermuda, which is of a high dose of Dallas or even the toxin. Now, the effects that we are going to talk about will not be only related to the digitalis purpura plant, but also the joxin, because the joxin is derived from the digitalis purpura. It's the joxin that results in toxication rather than digitalis purpura, because not many people will be having an access to this plant, but many people would be having access to digoxin, okay? So just bear that in mind. Both of these things are the same from, from now on. Okay, so what are the main toxic actions of digitalis purpura or digoxin? The first one would be stomach irritation. Now, uh, considering that it's a poison, okay? And it has some irritability to it, it's going to irritate the mucosal lining of the stomach. And whenever this mucosal lining of the GI tract is irritated, what happens? You will get nausea, vomiting, uh, stomach aches, epigastric pain, okay? All of that would happen. Your system is just trying to get rid of the unwanted substance that's present within it, okay? So that's a natural mechanism by which our body is going to get rid of this poison. Okay, then let's talk about the heart. Why? Because it's a cardiac poison and ultimately it's going to have its effect on the heart, right? So the first thing that uh, happens is a slowed heart rate or bradycardia. Now, there is a reason behind it. Why does Digoxin or digitalis purpura slows the heart rate. Why? Because it has a vagomimetic effect. Vagomimetic means it acts on, it acts like the vagus nerve. Okay, and vagus is purely parasympathetic, if you remember, right? And so when it's parasympathetic, it means that. Uh, I'm sorry, there's no vasovagal reflex. No, 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 no. It's not because of the vasovagal reflex that the heart rate is slow. I'm sorry. It's because of the vagomimetic effect on the AV node. It's going to act in the same way as the parasympathetic nervous system would. And it's going to affect, have an effect on the AV node and would slow down the heart rate by slowing down the electrical conduction across the AV node, okay? Uh, is it clear? Why does, why, why don't you encounter bradycardia? Because of the uh, blockage at the AV node due to the drugs, okay? Then since it's improving the myocardial contractility, uh, so just sometimes there would be some extra systoles as well, okay? Well, because uh, the heart is trying to contract and contract and contract. And so sometimes there would be some extra systoles as well. The heart will not have enough time to relax uh, in the diastolic phase because of rapid stimulation caused by progoxin. And that is why you're going to see some extra systoles which are not followed by diastoles, all right? 
Now, ventricular fibrillation. Now, I've just written ventricular fibrillation, but I want you guys to know that digitalis purpura or the dioxin uh, can result in any type of arrhythmia at all, be it a ventricular arrhythmia or an atrial arrhythmia. It can just, uh, you know, knock the atria or the ventricles to go crazy and uh, fibrillate or have any sort of arrhythmia in there. So it's not just uh, particularly the ventricular fibrillation that we are at risk of. However, it is quite common. That is why I've written it here. All right. So for ventricular fibrillation, uh, the reason is that that probably because of the increase in the intracellular calcium levels caused by uh, this digoxin, it causes a shortening of the action potential. Now, whenever the action, if you recall from your physiology, uh, there's a graph for the action potential, right? And whenever the action potential length is shortened, there is a chance for an arrhythmia to arise, right? So this is something uh, related to your physiology. And why are you going to get an arrhythmia? Because the intracellular calcium would increase by digital, digitalis that would cause the shortening in the action potential and would lead to arrhythmias. Okay? I hope it's clear. And if it's not, you should go back to your physiology and uh, read about it. Okay. Why am I not okay? So these are the signs and symptoms that we've already talked about. However, some of them are still left. So we're going to talk about it. GI irritation, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, diarrhea. Your system is just trying to get rid of the unwanted substance, right? That's it. The toxic effects on the heart. Bradycardia because of the vagomimetic effect. You can have a heart block because it is inhibiting the AV node, okay? That can also lead to a heart block, extra systoles due to extra contractility of the myocardium, ventricular fibrillation, we've just discussed why, because the length of the action potential decreases and that can lead to pro-arrhythmic effects on the heart, okay? So that is why it can cause fibrillation. I want you guys to remember each of the mechanisms for these. Why are you going to see bradycardia? Why are you going to see a heart block? Why are you going to have extra systems? Why are you going to have fibrillation, okay? Now, breathing. Breathing becomes slow and sighing. Again, this is because of the vagomimetic effect of uh, digoxin, okay? That causes a drop in the respiratory rate, okay? Now, CNS effects, drowsiness. This can be partly due to uh, the excessive contractility of the heart. Obviously, when the heart is contracting wildly and crazily, what happens is the actual output or the cardiac output decreases, right? When the heart does not have enough time to relax, that is when, and that is when the, uh, the heart fills, right? In its relaxation or the diastolic phase, remember? And when the heart's contracting wildly because of some toxic effects of digitalis, what happens is the cardiac output will decrease and may lead to drowsiness, okay? Simple. Now, convulsions leading to death convulsions or seizures. Now, I could not uh, actually uh, search for it or determine the actual cause of convulsions as to why the dioxin would have convulsions uh, in a patient. But I came up with the, I'm sorry, I came up with the lecture uh, a research article 
that I'm going to be showing you guys right now. And uh, just let me share that screen with you guys. So that uh, you can, just a second, I want to share that article with you. Here is the art of and this actual mechanism. I want you guys to read it. Um, However, I'm reading it for you guys to get it. So, the interventricular administration of digoxin induced popcorn type convulsions in rats. Though the convulsions looked similar to morphine induced seizures, naloxone failed to antagonize these effects. Other anti convulsions like phenobarbitone, etoxizamide, or lavergic substances like Pyrocetam and semi-carbazide also had no protect protective effect against the dioxin-induced convulsions. Now, this is not the mechanism I know. However, there is a suggestion of the mechanism below, which uh, we're going to read. While calcium chloride potentiated the effects of dioxin, phenytoin, magnesium chloride, potassium chloride treatment showed blocking actions. The observation suggests that involvement of sodium potassium ATPA system in digoxin induced conversions. So it's related to the sodium potassium ATPA system. Okay. The digoxin has an effect on the sodium potassium ATPA channel, as you can remember from your pharmacology. And that is the exact mechanism, possible exact mechanism, that can lead to conversions in digoxin. Okay, so we're going to have uh, um, it's fifteen to thirty milligrams of digitalin or four milligrams of digitoxin. Okay, all of these are the plant derived glycosides. Okay, of digitalis purpura. So don't get confused between what is digitalin or what is digitoxin. These are all glycosides that have been derived from the plant. Okay, so uh, below I've just written some uh, history of digoxin. Uh, it was a cardiac glycoside which uh, was isolated from foxglove plant, digitalis purpura. Okay, and it was discovered by withering in 1785. It's just a fact that I wanted to share with you guys. So the fatal period is quite variable. It can start from anywhere around half an hour, which is 30 minutes, to around 24 hours, okay? Now, what would be the treatment? The first step would be to get it out of the system, right? So you're going to wash the stomach with tannic acid. The bowels should be evacuated, which means emptied using enema or any other source. Okay. Now for the bradycardia, we're going to use atropine. Potassium salts can be used for extracystoles. Antidote for digoxin toxicity is propranolol or novocaine. Okay. Propranolol or Novocaine. Propranolol is a beta blocker. Novocaine is a calcium channel blocker. So you can easily uh, you relate why are we using this, okay? Since it increases intracellular calcium, we can use Novocaine. Propranolol will help uh, with the AV node, okay? To decrease the arrhythmias. Then you're going to monitor the patient on ECG. And also, you're going to lower the serum calcium levels by using tri-sodium EDTA. Uh, it's going to act as a chelator and will just bind to some extra free calcium that's uh, roaming around in the skin. Okay, so that not much calcium is available to the heart, and uh, that would probably result in a decreased contractility. I hope you guys are with me so far. 
Okay, so for, as far as the post-mortem appearance, it's not that characteristic. And uh, however, you might find some seeds or uh, the leftover medicine within the stomach. Okay? That's about it. So the post-mortem appearance isn't that important in this case. Okay, as for the medical legal aspect, poisoning is mainly accidental. Okay, it's mainly accidental from an overdose of the medicinal preparation of the Jackson. Okay, and the digitalis is a cumulative poison. We take it over time. We don't have to take it all at once. And it can have a cumulative action. Okay, homicidal poisoning is there. However, uh, no evidence can be tracked down for such cases because there is no postmortem evidence available. Okay, so homicidal poisoning is possible. Okay, homicidal means when you're trying to kill someone. So it can be used to kill someone as well. All right, so that uh, summarizes or ends the digitalis purpura part. The second party poison that we need to talk about is aconite or meta zehir. Okay, meta means a uh, sweet. Okay, so the plant is called aconitum nepales. Okay. Uh, it's quite hard to pronounce. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Aconitum nepalis. All right. So all parts of the plant are poisonous. Now, why do we call it meat as a hair? Because it has a sweetest, sweetish taste to it. It's not entirely sweet like uh, toffees or chocolates, but acrid sweet, like it's a pungent sweet. Okay. Now, First, uh, the main action of aconite on the myocardium is that first it's going to stimulate the myocardium and then finally it's going to depress it. Okay, and not only the myocardium, let me rem remind you that aconite is going to have an effect on the myocardium, the smooth muscles, the skeletal muscles, the CNS, and even the peripheral nerves. So it's not just related to the myocardium, okay? So uh, if you, uh, let's talk about the signs and symptoms. The first thing would be tingling and numbness to any part of the body that comes in contact with aconite, okay? So it has a local irritant effect. This sentence means this that aconite is going to have a local irritant effect, okay? It would produce tingling in the oral cavity, okay? Because locally irritate the oral cavity, obviously someone's going to take it by mouth, if someone's going to take it by mouth. The oral cavity would get irritated, as a result, the person would feel tingling sensation, and the local irritation would stimulate salivation, nausea, vomiting, and later on, when it goes down the system, diarrhea, okay? The stimulatory effect of uh, aconite on the muscles would produce twitching and even convulsions, okay? The patient who has overdosed would feel dizzy the vision and speech would be impaired and he would not be able to stand or walk. Why? Because it's going to have an effect on the CNS. Okay. It's also going to have an effect on the skeletal muscles. That is why you won't be able to stand or walk. And as for the speech impairment, it's because of the local effect of... Uh, Skeletal on skeletal muscles as well as on the CNS. Okay, so he won't be able to speak properly. His vision would be blurred as well. Now, as for breathing, it's rapid initially and later becomes slow. 
death is from cardiac arrhythmias or respiratory paralysis. So remember at the start, uh, on the first slide, I told you guys that it first stimulates and then depresses, right? So it depresses, it per it's first going to stimulate everything and then it's going to depress it. So that is why at first breathing would be very rapid with a very high respiratory rate and then later on it would be slowed down. Okay. Now, for the fatal dose, it's around one gram of the root or four milligrams of the alkaloid and fatal period is around roughly six hours. Now, I don't want you guys to remember this, but it's just to give you an idea of how much would be fatal. Okay, so don't worry about the numbers. So let's talk about treatment. Again, you need to get it out of the system. We're going to perform the gastric lavage using a solution of tannic acid. You need to support the heart. Remember, for bradycardia, you're going to give atropine or even digitalin or digoxin. Okay, when it's failing, you can give, you can increase the contractility of the myocardium by giving the toxin. For cardiac arrhythmias, you can give Novocaine IV. Duration and give oxygen support. Rest of the treatment would be symptomatic. Okay, so if he's having convulsions, you can give seizure medications. If he's having muscle twitching, uh, you're going to give uh, some benzodiazepines to relax him down. Okay, so that's how you're going to work with the symptomatic treatment. So that's about it. Thank you so much. Uh, now I'm open to any questions that you